Hi, my name is Jared. Uh, I've been an active community member uh, in Ethereum since like 2014. Uh, my background is actually in software distribution. Uh, here I'm today to talk to you about uh, integrating Ethereum into our daily lives uh, using Status, uh, our Ethereum Lite client uh, developed for Android and iOS. Uh, but before I do, I kind of want to talk about my, uh, my personal motivations and uh, why I believe in Ethereum. Uh, see, in recent history, like, uh, you can see many cases of like, economic collapse, um, fi um, institutional failures, and uh, large populations of people who have no access to dependable legal technologies. Um, and of course, these are complex problems, uh, but I believe they stem from our inability for us to adapt socially fast enough. Um, but what if we could create digital spaces in where we can experiment with new ideas, new economic models, new policies, and new ways of socially organizing? Social systems as operational closures in which we have unprecedented access to the entire eco um, economy's history, uh, down to the very transaction level and the social contracts that bind them. What if we can then use this data to discover something new and then deploy it globally within 30 seconds or less for anyone to use voluntarily. That's the kind of world that I want to live in. But none of that's really possible until we start getting Ethereum into the hands of people. Uh, show of hands, who has a smartphone with them right now? There's more than, more than that. Um, now, keep, uh, keep your hand up if you don't have your laptop uh, with you right now. Right? So smartphones are now the new personal computer. Uh, in 2014, they'd overtake, uh, overtaken desktops in users, and now we're seeing that more time is being spent on them than on desktops. Armed with this information, we decided to bring Ethereum to Android and iOS last year uh, with a higher-end goal of recreating the Mist DAP browser experience on mobile devices. Uh, but as we were developing, I started uh, looking at my own behaviors and how I was using my own smartphone. And I realized I wasn't really browsing the web except for when I was at restaurants or I was at home sitting down with Wi-Fi. And to be honest, the web is a little tedious. So that got me wondering, how are other people using their smartphones? Um, it turns out that we are social creatures and uh, we love instant messaging and social networks. In fact, uh, compared to browsers, instant messengers have three times the amount of monthly active users, and a third of all time spent on smartphones is actually inside an instant messenger. It seems to me if we want to create the biggest surface area possible for accessibility, this is a really good candidate. But then I started to wonder, what would Ethereum look like as an instant messenger? How can we keep its generality? How can we maintain decentralization? And what would a DAP ecosystem look like in the context of chat? How would we humanize the protocol, turning addresses into faces? Under the hood, Status actually runs a full implementation of Go Ethereum with the Light Client and Whisper protocols enabled. On top of Whisper, we build our instant messenger and uh, we actually do our own key management and transaction management. To dApps, uh, it all looks pretty much the same. They still have access to Web3 and a local JS on RPC server. Um, and we also introduce a, a new kind of uh, extensibility to dApps, uh, which is more integrated with chat and uh, can render with a, with a subset of React Native. And I'll get into those in a moment. So when you first run status, you meet your first autonomous entity, console. Console is, uh, is there really to help you with onb onboarding, to educate you on how to use the basic features of status. Um, it also is also there to set up your first account. So here you can see our request message, uh, and it's asking us to tap on it, so let's do that. Here the request is asking us to set up a password, so let's type it in. And to confirm, 
now our message is sent, and status has generated uh, a master key based on uh, and given us our passphrase. Uh, we also have the passphrase in multiple languages, including Mandarin. With this master key, we derive two child keys, a main account and a sub-account root. With the main account, we actually do something little, uh, interesting and something you're not really supposed to do with Whisper. We actually inject the key pair directly into Whisper. This gives us an interesting property, and not only you can transact with that public key, but you can also chat with it. This becomes your handle in status. Of course, uh, there is a trade-off with address hash security, uh, so we'll probably end up doing some automated management uh, with any funds that are in that into a sub-account. In status, dApps are first-class citizens. That means they look and feel just like your friends. At the top here, we have our default dApp wallet. And let's uh, tap on it and have a look. Wallet is an HTML and JavaScript dApp, just like what you'd find in Mist or MetaMask. And it, pretty much all of those would work the same within status. Uh, this is actually rendered with a special built-in command that turns the uh, text input field into something like an address bar, and it renders a web view in the suggestions area. Uh, I'll talk a bit uh, about that in a minute. Underneath the suggestions area, we have a chat history, and this can be used for uh, a per dApp transaction log, uh, and can even be used as a support channel if the dApp developer wants to talk to you. Chat dApps integrate with status a little more closely using a chat API. They can create new commands and new message types. Here we have an example with example dab, and uh, here they've sent us a request message um, just like console did, and we'll get to that in a moment. But in the, uh, the bottom left, next to type, there is a command list icon. You'll notice it has a little blue dot on it, indicating that there is a pending request somewhere within the chat history. So when you want commands, you can either start typing directly here with an exclamation mark, or you can type on the command list icon. Once here, the suggestions area is populated with all our commands and requests that are available within the context. Here we have one pending request and two commands. Now we can either start typing in the command that we want and filtering down the search, or we can tap directly on it. So now we've typed in send, and uh, we're on our first parameter. A command is instantiated using status.command. It is passed an object with multiple properties. The most noteworthy are the parameters and three handlers, preview, handler, and validator. Now we are on our first parameter, two. And you can see that it is the type contact, and the, the default value is the first participant within the chat context. We can either type in the name, or we can just press uh, tap on the uh, example dab. Every time we interact with the, the parameter, the validator fu uh, function is called, and it can either uh, inform status to move on to the next parameter, or it can return a subset of React Native to render some uh, custom user interface within the suggestions area. So we'll do that. Uh, now we're on the second parameter from, and this is uh, using context, context self as the default value, which is us. So we'll just do that. And uh, here is the third one, amount. Uh, the code is omitted because I couldn't fit it on screen. Uh, but notice how this, the type is a uh, number, so it changes the keyboard. And uh, in this case, the validator has returned some custom user interface, uh, which is a slider in this case. Um, now we've filled out all our parameters. We can hit send. Once this has happened, the message actually goes into a staging area. The preview handler is called, and the preview handler defines what the, the chat message is going to look like. Now when we press send, after the user has reviewed it, we're going to call the, uh, the command's handler function. And this is where the meat of the, the command uh, actually happens. In our case, we're going to end up calling web3 send transaction. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh, state change. Any, any uh, send transaction request is intercepted by status and is put into a transaction queue for the user to, uh, to review. Uh, it is represented visually by a list of uh, horizontal scrolling cards. 
The user can either confirm or deny the transactions uh, and remember certain types. Uh, now I want to talk about requests and responses. They allow us to daisy chain commands and even pre-fill parameters for, uh, to friends to, to fill out commands as well. They allow us to have more rich in, uh, interactions and more meaningful conversations. You can imagine in the future, we're going to have multiple dApps being used in a modular fashion, and they can be daisy chained together. In this case, uh, example dApp would have uh, ran a command, uh, where is, which would have made a status request for, um, for our response, and the target is uh, the first parameter. Uh, so we tapped on that, uh, that uh, message that was pending, the request message, and notice how in the suggestions area, the header has changed, uh, indicating what type of request it is, who it was by, and when. Uh, it's given, the, given us one parameter, which is our address, And now it's in the staging era, like before. Um, responses uh, have the same object structure as commands. Uh, they are just instantiated with status.response. So let's send that. Okay. In status, dApps can be added into group chats. This uh, uh, caused a mild dilemma in that with dApps, the codes are executed on each participant's device. That means we need to enable uh, permissions for each command for everyone to use it within the, the chat context. This is as simple as going to the dApps profile and tapping on the commands. Another core feature of status is called Discover, and it allows you to advertise your goods and services, find dApps, and other participants by hashtags. So let's make ourselves discoverable. Change my name, and I'll add in uh, status. When my status has hashtags in it, it is uh, published to a public uh, topic, and all my friends who are monitoring me, they can see this. On the Discover screen at the top, uh, we have a series of cards which demonstrate the most popular tags in the information you have available. Below it, we have a, a live stream of recent statuses coming in. Uh, this information is disseminated using uh, a package which is uh, created from a list of statuses from your friends uh, and also an aggregate of packages that you've received from your other friends. Uh, it's weighted by a, no a number of factors, whether online, how recent the status is, um, if you've seen it amongst m multiple peers, and if you've actually opened a chat history with it. Uh, there's a couple of other extensions to the chat API, such as like a, a QR generator and uh, scanning, and contact menu creation, which uh, I won't go into. Uh, we're also multi-account ready, so for shared devices and other dApp developers with multiple accounts, or just to log out of the app. Uh, everything I've described today uh, we are feature complete. It's a bit rough around the edges, um, but it's all there. Uh, we are now moving into a testing phase, and we should hopefully have a binary by the end of the year. Um, we are open source uh, as of today. Um, we're under MPL2, and that's our technology stack. So if you're a ClojureScript developer, uh, I would love to chat with you. Um, there's a developer guide that just guides you through the whole process. It's pretty, pretty painless. Um, also, stay tuned. We're uh, working on a GitHub issue bounty bots where uh, you can assign bounties to GitHub issues and then they can be paid out to contributors on successful pull requests. Uh, the current implementation is a little naive, so um, yeah, probably give us like a month or two on that one. Yeah, and thank you so much. I hope everyone's using Status by DEFCON 3.